and top of the morning to you. Welcome to my study again. And once more with the book, and this one is the A to Z of British Ghosts. And the author is Peter Underwood. Tales and Mystery and Legend, 1971. And here we have one which is Sherrington Manor, Selmeston in Sussex, where the family have, have no fear of their brown-clad, unidentified ghost that haunts the wide staircase. There's a top one there, look. A figure, brown-clad, that haunts the staircase. The lovely, lovely branches of... Um, Cedar a Lebanon tree, classic ancestral country home tree. That let's have a look. Selmston near Alfriston, Sussex. Years ago, tall grey haired Cecil Chandless, Lord of the Manor, told me how the brown clad figure had haunted his home. Sherrington Manor. He saw the ghost several times on the staircase. One summer afternoon the family were at sea and when they were surprised to hear the, the crunch of, of horses hooves and the grind of carriage wheels which you can easily imagine which, which seemed to herald uh, the arrival of a horse-drawn coach obviously. The immediate investigation showed the drive to be deserted and nothing was ever discovered to account for the noise. In 1963 I wrote to Mrs Chandler, her husband was then was then dead unfortunately, to ask whether I, I could bring some members of the ghost club down to uh, Shanklin uh, following reports of more unexplained happenings there. I must, I must say at this point that uh, Peter Underwood was the president of the ghost club which was housed in um, beautiful building in London and they wanted to go back with their members to investigate it. Doors were said to open and close mysteriously. The swish of clothes, which is a common phenomenon in these large country houses, and the tramp of heavy boots had been heard on the same staircase where Mr Chandler had seen the ghost figure all those years ago, which he called Marmaduke. And there were knocks and rattling noises which could not be explained. The knocking noises which I have in fact experienced here in this in this haunted home of mine. A typical uh, poltergeist phenomenon. And you usually get about you usually get three, sometimes four, but usually it's three. Which indicates the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Anyway, back to the story. We duly went to Shangton Manor and went again a few years later. We talked to Mrs Chandler's and her daughter, Marissa, and other members of the family and household about the curious experiences that they had, they had, they have all had. They all fully accept the, the, the fact that, the, that they have unbidden guests, and indeed would not be without them. Neither would I really. I used to be afraid of living here, but um, you get used to them, and overall you think, well, what of harm have they done to me? They've done me no harm, and they're welcome. In fact, I, I feel actually protected here. Well, members of the family are now sort of that they're curious of us, and, uh, and they fully accept the fact that, that they are unbidden guests and wouldn't be without them. Here we are. Neither would I. For they feel that, that Sherrington is haunted by happy ghosts. As such, a charming house should be quite right. Teresa, the Austrian maid, once heard the handle of the garden door rattle. And she saw the handle turn, which indeed I have here. Most disconcerting. <laughs> but <laughs> you get over it. Uh, anyway, I heard the handle turn, but when she looked over the wall, there was no one on the other side. 
She was so perturbed about it, the poor woman, that she gave in a notice, but Mrs Chandler persuaded her to stay, and now Teresa too feels that there, that there are indeed ghosts that are friendly, and she has nothing to fear, and it's not, uh, they've, they've never really harmed or, or, or really frightened anyone, just, just gave away their presence. Which, which they have here as well. I've, I've seen taps turn on just before I've got to them. You know, I've got, wanted to get to the tap and it's turned on for me. Same with the drawer, it's opened. Now, you have to interpret that as being uh, a bit of a helpful thought, a bit, a bit thoughtful spirit, if indeed it was that. The only, back to the story now, the only unhappy element of the haunting has been outside in, in the lovely garden, where very occasionally one has the overwhelming feeling of being watched by someone, someone nasty. That, that's quite a common phenomenon as well, particularly in a neglected corner of the, of the ancient garden. It may be a kind of a barrier of mystery that dates back to Saxon times. Within the house, odd things happen from time to time, and occasionally a ghost is seen, especially when, when, when someone in the house is ill. I remember seeing an apparition here. On the night I was in bed, I saw, saw this figure appear at the side of the bed, and I could feel the weight on the side of the bed against my leg as it sat down and reached across me and towards my chest and done that. It was all in white, like the, the classic vision of an angel. You can't see the features, just just in the soft white silvery light. And the next day I was ill, I had shingles and it lasted for three months. The most dreadful pain. It was the ghost of a spirit that knew that that it was a premonition. It was going to happen. It heralded that shingles episode and it lasted three months. I was in pain many years ago here. Within the house, odd things happen from time to time and occasionally a ghost is seen, especially when someone in the house is ill. Once such a person had a friendly visit from an unknown female who leaned over her bed and seemed to say kindly she's asleep. Once too a whole dinner party saw a figure which uh, certainly had no um, objective reality pass through the, uh, the hall and mount the stairs. When the family went to, went to the new forest during the last war, they believed that Marmaduke followed them there and, and, and fretted, fretted uh, to, get, to get back to, to Sherrington. They heard impatient knocks and felt something invisible brush against them. They sensed strongly that, that they were required to return to their Sussex home. Now Mrs Chandless will tell you, None of us feels that we could ever leave here again. Oh, how sweet. How wonderful. And certainly when they went to the new forest, it was a, it was a home from home, wasn't it? The ghost. The ghost followed them. There's the house. Where that happened. Where the Chandlers lived. And the figure clad was seen on the stairs and pass, pass through the dining hall where all, all of those people were that uh, indeed saw it and the maid as well that uh, saw the, the handle rattle and she opened it immediately there was nothing, nothing there at all. Typical beautiful country house and the lovely cedar of Lebanon tree and they reckon that there's more Leb Lebanon cedars in this country than there is it actually in Lebanon there we are nice to see you thanks for coming in do come again pleasure to see you and what a beautiful day it is sun shining out there September doing well see you soon all the best till then bye bye for now